this week on Sports Feed KC from the Kansas City Star. Tales of tailgating from Arrowhead and the Lone Star State. Flipping discs at Waterworks Park. And the War of the Wickets. The feed is next. Hi, I'm Randy Mason, and this is Sports Feed KC, your midweek video break. Yeah, I'm trying out catchphrases. Anyway, we're at Waterworks Park in Northtown, also known as the home field for the Kansas City Disc Golf Club. Uh, they've got a big club championship coming up, so might not be surprised to see some of the best players in town getting warmed up for that. First, though, Arrowhead Stadium turns 50 this season. Not all the teams that played there in that time have been great, but the tailgating has been consistently phenomenal. Videographer Todd Feeback and I decided to check in on the pregame festivities before the Chiefs' home opener with the, started to say San Diego, Los Angeles Chargers. It's still more than two hours before kickoff, and it seems like every one of the 70-some thousand ticket holders must be coming to tailgate too. The parking lot is jammed with hundreds, thousands of tents and tables laden with food and beverage. Flags are flapping, footballs are flying, and bean bags are bouncing off cornhole boards like there's no tomorrow. Once in a while, you might even see an actual tailgate. The big question, of course, is what's cooking? There you go, steak sandwiches. We have ribs, we have wings, we overcompensate. We had chicken, brisket, hamburger, fries. We got some Johnny's wings, we got some nacho cheese that goes real good with these pretzels. We had burgers and then we got stuffed peppers. We have soft shell tacos, hard shell, refried beans, and tequila. Cheese! It's not what you eat, it's who you eat it with. When the Truman Sports Complex opened in 1972, the tailgating phenomenon was growing by leaps and bounds all over the country. Some of the more veteran gators have been at it ever since. We've been doing tailgates with the folks and the family and friends forever. 42 years of tickets. It's like riding a bike. It's old friends, we have our spots, it's family. Are you from around here? Well, we're from St. Louis, so we drive down every week. This is what we do. How's it going? It's so far so good. Tomorrow's my birthday and I've never been to a Chiefs game. Okay, I've got no data to back any of this up, but our on-the-ground research shows that the Arrowhead crowd loves to dance. And they're remarkably generous. These guys are all from San Diego, didn't have anywhere to go, so we invited them over and they're drinking beer and eating some food and we're going to show them a good time. Even the NFL's least loved mascot is a big hit here. Oh, and everyone seems to know who's going to win. Some red cake! Yeah, there's a lot of talk about the Chargers being all that, but they're coming, they're coming through us. Go Chiefs! Go Chiefs! There will be at least seven more opportunities for people to haul out their grills and coolers and cornhole gear, maybe more if we make the playoffs. Of course, tailgating is not done the exact same way everywhere, especially colleges. Uh, the Grove at Old Miss, uh, Vandyville at Vanderbilt, for example. Our producer in Fort Worth, Candy Bolden, attended SMU in Dallas, and she wanted us to know about something they call boulevarding. Spoiler alert. It does look different. Game day means getting ready with your wardrobe, too. My romper is BBG, and I don't know where my boots are from. This is for Love and Lemons. This is Ralph Lauren. We kind of always joke and say that it's like our very own fashion week every single weekend. The girls especially take it pretty seriously. Why did you want to dress up for this? Um, because it's the first football game, it's the first home game, and but like school spirit, but also conformity. People wear anything from dresses, like mini dresses with sneakers, to sundresses and a wedge, or gosh, there's even some matching sets sometimes. 
At SMU, fans call tailgating Boulevarding, which is named after Bishop Boulevard, the white tent-lined road on campus where fans meet up for food and drinks before football games. You get to enjoy the beauty of the campus. And with tailgating, often you're on a parking lot or you're an area that's crammed where you're just dealing with the people who are right around you. Here, as you can see, people walk up and down. The first Boulevard was a little over 20 years ago and was rolled out for a sold-out game against a familiar team. The first Boulevard was the 2000 season when we opened Ford Stadium. We played Kansas. It was 102 that day, but the Boulevard was still uh, well populated. The Boulevard is expected to be well populated the rest of the season, including SMU's next home game on October 14th. As you can see, the seasons are starting to change and at least one sports season is ending. The Royals capped another losing year by canning general manager Dayton Moore and leaving some big question marks about what's next for the team and all those promising youngsters we saw so much of toward the end of the summer. But there's one thing we definitely do know, the results of the last condiment race at the KRN. Personally, I'm a mustard man. You won't see this anywhere else. And they're off. And around the turn, catch up with a slight lead. Mustard right behind. There's Relish on the rail. Here they come. Mustard trying to make a move on the outside. Ketchup will have nothing of it. Look at him go. Here comes Ketchup and Relish making his move. Ketchup, your 2022 Hot Dog Derby champion. There are now over 30 disc golf courses around the metro. Waterworks Park is one of the oldest and one of the hilliest. In case you don't follow the sport, the idea is simple. Pop your platter into the baskets and enjoy the great outdoors while you're doing it. Players come prepared to drive, putt, maybe even walk away with an ace. The club championship event starts on October 15th at Rosedale Park and finishes here on Sunday the 16th. I bet most of us have a croquet set tucked away somewhere, you know, in the basement or the garden shed. Members of the Kansas City Croquet Club know exactly where their gear is stowed. They pull it out just about every weekend at their rustic croquet court in South Kansas City. Now, I always thought the best part of the game was knocking someone else's ball away, but apparently there's a whole lot more to croquet than that. It's a crafty and vicious game. <laughs> uh, and, it, and it's also a lot of fun. It's uh, pretty much all about the strategy. There are several different variations of the game, and this club plays a timed version of Nine Wicked, which is sometimes called Backyard Croquet. The club's president explains a little bit about what makes this particular variation complex. I think one thing that I've always said is why it seems complicated to most people. Most sports that you think about, if they involve a ball, they involve one. And it's really easy. Or even like hockey, it's a puck. It's one thing. Where people get confused is the pieces are kind of all over the place. And they're like chess pieces when you're out there. You know, the, uh, the wickets are like spaces and the balls are like chess pieces. Um, so. That's, I think, where people look. Oh, it's so complicated because they don't they don't have one thing to look at, and they don't know why, you know, when they watch an advanced game, why someone would just shoot a ball out of bounds, you know, um, their own ball. You know, they don't know why they would do that. One signature move in croquet is the jump shot, which allows a player to get past an opponent's ball that is blocking a wicket, as Dylan demonstrates. Valerie likes that the game can be played by nearly anyone. There's no chasing a ball around and ending up on the ground like volleyball. There's no big swings that can tear up your shoulders like golf. And she brings her own bit of strategy to the game that has nothing to do with ball placement. I'm a big fan of trash talk. <laughs> so I'll trash talk the other players, given half a chance. <laughs>
And that's it for this edition of The Feed. Next time, some intentional crashing and bashing at, yep, the Demolition Derby. For the Kansas City Star, I'm Randy Mason. See you then.